So I'd like to invite Dr. Menon Mathen to deliver his first talk. Thank you, Dr. Haripriya. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's straight go into the topic of nucleus management in PC rupture. No financial interest in this. So when you have a PC rupture, you can have it uh, as early as this, even, even before starting your FACO. So hydro rupture of the PC itself can cause a, a PC rupture and then a, a nucleus drop immediately before you start this. That is the most dreaded thing. We would like to avoid such a thing. So we should take clues from what is happening. See, when, you have, when I'm rotating this, see that line there. That's a subtle line which you have to notice on the posterior capsule, which doesn't change shape. That means there is something uh, behind the nucleus, which is most probably a posterior capsule rupture. But the pupil is slightly small. There is no vitreous. So I, this is in 2011, as you can see, this was done in 2011, when I am much younger and much bolder than what I am now. So I am just going ahead with the, the FACO, you know, yes, but the, con the movements are controlled, but I have not changed any settings. I think that is the wrong thing which we, are, we do when we are bolder. So things should happen away from the area of the capsular rupture and also it should happen slowly and your flow rate should come down and the vacuum should be used minimally. Here again, things are going very slow. It is being done away from the area of rupture, especially in the anterior chamber. And I am lucky that nothing fell down through the open capsule. So it is very much possible. So here, if you notice, look at this piece of nucleus. This is half of nucleus here, this side. It is disap almost disappearing in the pupillar area. That means there is some poster capsule rupture behind. So I stop and wait and don't take out the irrigation or your uh, uh, FACO probe. That is the first thing to do. And fill up and push down the capsule or the vitreous if it has come up with dispersive viscoelastic. Here there is no vitreous. So with the dispersive viscoelastic there, I reduce my vacuum and most importantly reduce my flow rate and do most of the FACO without multiple sub-chops. Because if you sub-chop into very small pieces, they tend to float around and drop through large posterior capsule openings. So I eat up the whole piece gradually and slowly and now comes up the central opening which you can see very clearly here, posterior polar cataracts, which may hide behind mature cataracts like this, especially in India we have so many patients coming like this. So these kind of linear line extending from one end to the other is mostly uh, a posterior polar cataract which, which would give way when we uh, do this initial chopping. So now I bring out the half of the nucleus into the anterior chamber, get a three-piece eye oil. You can put it on top of the iris if you are not sure of the anterior rexus margin. Or if you are sure that the rexus margin is there, you can place it into the sulcus itself. Now one of my haptics is on the iris. After that, this emulsification of the rest of the nucleus under viscote protection of the endothelium and very slowly. And you can notice that I am not splitting it very widely and small chops, very small, mild separation and then trying to eat off most of the most of the lens part by part, not letting it go up. And you can notice that the IO is acting like a scaffold and it is preventing any nucleus piece from going down. That is the purpose of having the lens there, the IO there. And here again, very gently, the movements are all very gentle, very slow, take your time and then finish off piece by piece and complete. And again, do not take out anything without um, putting in viscoelastics. And I now dilate the pupil. Mostly the pupil will come down when the nucleus has been taken into the anterior chamber. Dilate it and visualize and do a vitrectomy because you have, I have put in a lot of visco behind and it has gone into the vitreous. And to take out that, it is difficult without disturbing the vitreous. And so, I do a vitrectomy along with the aspiration of the, because HPMC once it goes into the vitreous and mixes, it causes a lot of uh, a glaucoma and inflammation later. And the IOL goes into, this, uh, into the sulcus and, and it is <coughs> barely uh, captured because the rexus size is slightly larger in these kind of cases. And uh, the good thing is that the IOL is well centered and you won't get a PCO later to YAG. So here again in a mature cataract, my rexus is complete. Just to show you that rex is complete. I do my first job, see the central white area there. And I see something f fluttering here. This is a very clear area. Generally, you don't see something like this. You'll have some vitreous. Now, this line which I'm touching, that is uh, proven that by touching it, 
<coughs> I can touch the poster capsule. There's a large opening in the poster capsule. So the whole lens is there, divided into two, definitely, but more pieces are still there. So here, I would not want to continue on FACO. So decide prudently when you want to convert. Here, I am trying to extend my corneal incision, not the ideal thing to do, but to four millimeters so that this can be taken out. So here you can notice these are, we, they have been already subdivided. So they are coming piece by piece. So viscote has been injected to the anti into the anterior vitreous and that is protecting the uh, lens pieces from falling down. But here it is always good. Instead of an IOL, you can have this kind of a silicon, silicon uh, slide. This is the sheets glide which we, which we have forgotten. But still it can be made out of this uh, silicon bands and it can be placed underneath so that it doesn't drop while you are trying to take it out with the vectors or we can hold it with a large uh, uh, forceps also and it can be pulled out. So once these nucleus bits are out, then we can suture this uh, opening which we have created larger on the cornea and then go ahead with antidivitrectomy. The details of antidivitrectomy will be uh, covered in a different topic. And once the antidivitrectomy is done, we make sure that the vitreous is fully gone and the lens goes into the sulcus where the rexus margin is intact and here the rexus is too large to capture but it doesn't matter even if it is not captured it doesn't matter the, some of the lenses now with 13.5 millimeter overall size is uh, well fit into the and this is the last case but done by a trainee uh, this is a little difficult to see but then please watch the rexus is very small so do a forceful hydro you can see a pupillary snap already and now further hydrodissection is happening without realizing. And now you can see a very clear area. And now the rotation of the nucleus stops. So you push, it goes to one side, doesn't spring back. So now we take over and uh, dilate the pupil. That's the first thing to do. And the rexus is small, so we extend the rexus. As far as possible, retain an intact rexus margin. And this nucleus is full nucleus. So it is tilting, but when you try to dial it out, with viscote going underneath the lens, it's okay. So you can dial the, nucle the nucleus out into the anterior chamber. I have extended a little bit, but now you can, option is yours. You can go to a different location, create a good corneoscleral tunnel, or you can give back cuts after doing a, a localized peritomy, back cuts from the edges of your clear corneal incision and make a large sclerocorneal tunnel. So there is no compromise on the size of the tunnel here because the nucleus is very large and you need to take it out cleanly without uh, manipulating in the anterior chamber mode. So and at least a 7 to 8 millimeter internal opening is required to get this very hard cataract out. And without irrigating much, it is delivered out. And now luckily it comes out in one piece. And now the uh, incision is sutured. And then we go ahead like what we saw before, put the iris hooks back again, visualize what is there. Is there a capsule rupture, anterior capsule uh, rexus margin rupture? If not, you can continue the vitrectomy and place the IOL in the sulcus and have outcomes uh, as good as a regular normal case. So recognition early and the decision to convert, uh, if you are in doubt to proceed with FACO, will give you best results even in a, uh, in a PC rupture early happening in FACO emulsification.